What happened to my shirt? This man happened to my shirt. It's the 100th season of the NFL, and we couldn't be more pumped. Oh! Another year of gut-wrenching plays, oh! compelling stories, In five, four, three, and glorious wins. Let's get it. Leading up to the Vince Lombardi. At the heart of it all, an elite chosen few. Ain't no refs out here, Johnny. Anything goes, baby. But make no mistake, in the NFL there are players, and then there are ballers. Three, two, one. Ugh. A man, a myth, a legend, Travis Kelsey. He's a four-time Pro Bowler. Really a beautiful route by Kelsey. Three-time All-Pro. And in 2018, he made Chiefs history with 1,336 receiving yards, the most recorded by a tight end in a single season. 6'5", 260, tall, dark, and handsome, sort of similar to myself. Going into his seventh season with the Chiefs, this year promises to be just as strong for Kelsey. With some pipes like that, man, I think just so. Just got done working out, nice tan. But aside from his winning personality, there's more to Kelsey's success than meets the eye. And today, I'm at the Chiefs training facility in Kansas City to experience what that is. This is your home, this is your turf. Mm -hmm. What comes to mind? A lot of hard work. I bet. Yeah, especially in here. Okay. I mean, there's not too much glory in here other than just like being miserably hot. But you're miserably hot all the time. Yes, yeah. I am. So in here it's even worse. Yes, it's even worse. Literally and figuratively. With the, <laughs> with the fans going, I'm still hot as ever. But to get to the heart of his game, let's break it down play by play. When I'm on the field, I'm a completely different person. I change into this alter ego into always being the attacker. Okay. So today, Kill your alter beat, ego yeah. is Nana. Nana, okay. what's your alter Nana. ego? My alter ego is Bobby Blanco, but that's for a different reason. Blanco. Yours is Nana. Come off the rock, and when you come around the turn, the ball is going to be coming right at your face. Okay. And I throw a pretty good ball. Red 80! Red 80's hot! Oh! I didn't teach you about keeping your, your hands up out of the break. Obviously, huge component. I was waiting for it to come to my face, and it was over here, See, but that's cool. That was banana. Okay. I need Nana. Have you been a tight end all throughout your career? I moved to tight end my junior year of college. I got into some trouble, and when I came back on the team, the coach that was there, Butch Jones, told me that he doesn't need a quarterback anymore. Once I moved to tight end, I found a love for the position in the game and just uh, taken it from there. What is that? Ah, ah. Hands up, right in the gut, and you're coming back to me. What are you doing, Nana? The end zone is this way. way. Ah, that's on me. All right, that's me. You know what? That's why I got a little bit tight end. When I was in high school, my nickname was tight end, but that's because I have like a really in shape derriere. Okay. Travis Kelsey is the best tight end in the league. Yet I'm about to show him up at his own game. Remember, Nana, Nana, got turn it. it on. Got it. What eighty? Is that hot? Nice. Huh? Way to get skinny. That's good stuff. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't expect you to do that on the first try. What exactly are we simulating in a game? You see that, that it's a run, and you see the running back with the ball, you're avoiding the linebackers, and you're going downhill in your tackle. Well, why not just try and jump over his head this time? I haven't seen that since Troy Palomalu. Right, let's do it. Huh? It's Nana right there. That was Nana all day. I did not see that one coming. Hand hug. That's pretty good. Thanks, man. I'm not even sure if I can do that one. Come Once on. I saw the headband, I was like, all right, he's real deal. He showed some promise. He also showed some weakness. But he gives great effort, and that's always appreciated. Best of luck to you this season. I appreciate you. Go win that Super Bowl. You know I'm going to be rooting for you, my friend. My guy. I all appreciate right? you, dude, dude. Before the stadium is filled, the fans have arrived, or the coin has been tossed. Ain't no refs out here, Johnny. Anything goes, baby. The game has already begun. It takes months, even years, of very specific, intense training to get these bodies ready for primetime. 
And a lot of that work goes down right here at XPE Sports. XPE is extreme performance enhancement. We work with junior high, high school, collegiate, and professional athletes on speed, agility, quickness, balance, and strength training. So what kind of stuff are you guys gonna be putting me through today? So we're gonna start off with NFL Combine drills, 40 yard dash, vertical jump, agility drill, what guys do before they get drafted. I'm trying to keep it cool here, but I'm dying on the inside. But the secret is I'm also dying on the outside. Ah! It's gonna take me four years to recover from this workout. But it's not just about being fast and strong. According to experts, 90% of performance is mental. So, based on my responses to his mind test, trainer Mark is going to assess if I'm mentally tough enough for the NFL. Setbacks and failures allow me to learn, rarely. I'm frustrated when I make mistakes in competition, frequently. When I get mad at myself, I punch myself in the groin. What? Smooth, yep, smooth. There you go. Good rest. Much better. You might be coachable. You think? Yeah. And just as I'm thinking I would kill it at the NFL Combine, I can defeat more talented players if I work harder than them. Yeah. So this is the last time y'all gonna hear Johnny Man is. Good luck. This is XPE creator Tony Villani. Getting out of bed is more difficult than this for me every morning, so I hope we're stepping it up. And this is Pittsburgh Steelers center Marquise Pouncey and his brother Mike, center for the LA Chargers. What am I doing? You gotta try to get by him inside the cone. <laughs> What's that over there? <laughs> <laughs> That, my friends, is what training for the NFL looks like. But now, Cincinnati Bengals defensive end Carl Lawson is going to show me what it feels like. Oh. Oh. What happened to my shirt? This man happened to my shirt. We're in beautiful Boca on a steamy day in July when NFL Pro Training is at its most intense. So, after several grueling hours at XPE, I'm taking a field trip for some offensive and defensive drills against the pros. We've had 16 people be the fastest at the NFL Combine. Wow. Uh, over 30 first round picks, and then like over 100 world champions. What have you learned from these guys? I kind of use the education and my ability to train, but then I actually learn the football game from them and how they actually move. <laughs> what was that? That was jujitsu, bro. For me, I want to get better in every aspect, every offseason. Technique, my mechanics and my speed, you know, just pay attention to the little details because that's, you know, what's going to make you successful on Sundays. Go! How has XPE helped your game? Man, just keeping my stride open, keeping my turnover open, just explosion, gaining the step out of cuts, out of breaks. That boy ain't got no moves. I've been excelling every single year since I've been here, so I feel better right now than I did when I was 23. Oh, let's go, Johnny. You bananas, man. What the general public doesn't realize that if you get one step on an NFL athlete, you can never catch him. So if we can create that one step, our guys never get caught. Being on the field with you guys and seeing how insanely strong, fast you guys are, it, it really does put things into perspective. Mm -hmm. What you see on TV, trust me, you cannot keep up with these yes. guys. You went up against some of the best players in the sport, didn't back down, held your own, think you impressed a lot of people. I'm giving you a, a solid B. Overall likelihood of making the league. <laughs> I know they respect you more after just throwing yourself out there like that. I would say you're like a C-plus offensive lineman. I'll take it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a wrap. <laughs> oh. If you think football is just a man sport, think again. For the Buffalo Bills, I am part owner as well as our team president. My name is Katie Sowers and I'm an offensive assistant coach for the San Francisco 49ers. I'm one of four hosts on NFL Network's Good Morning Football. I'm a sports personality slash analyst slash fan. Contrary to popular belief, women love football. So much so that according to the NFL, roughly 45% of its fan base is female. Outside of football being the most exciting sport ever, I love it so dearly for what it is, for the X's and O's, for what happens out there between plays, for defenses. I love even more 
the storylines. There's no better soap opera in sports than the NFL. Despite its huge female following, the representation of women within the NFL is lacking. But with game changers like Kim, Katie, and Kay at the helm, that statistic is steadily changing. I always grew up and football was my favorite sport. Uh, ever since I was really little, I have a lot of journal entries where I would write all about how important football was to me and how I'd play every day after school with my twin sister. It never popped in my mind that I could coach football uh, because I'd never really seen it as an option. Having faith in something is hard, it's not easy, but when you actually see something in action, it's a little bit easier, right? So when anybody sees a female on the sidelines in a role, in a meeting, says, okay, you know what, I can see that path. I can see something that's available. So I do think the visibility is very, very important. Working for Kim Pagula and, and what she stands for is an incredible opportunity. It's not just a, a distant ownership. And I think in hiring women and creating an environment of diversity and inclusion, that's the action that puts that into place. But whether you're calling the shots, leading drills, or analyzing plays, staying at the top of your game is no easy task. I always say I got all the perks of being an owner, but now I have to do all the work. It's a lot of behind the scenes meetings, but then it's a lot of upfront interacting with our sponsors, our fan base, players, and on the coaching, my husband, my kids. Kim Pagula broke ground as the first ever female president of an NFL team. And to further expand her influence beyond the bills, Kim is also a member of multiple committees across the league. Nobody gives you a manual, right? So nobody tells you how to be an owner and what it all entails. And these committees help me do that. Before you see me on air at 7 a.m., I wake up around 3.30, take a look at the highlights to see what I'm dealing with that day, and go over the storylines. This is the rundown. Pretty much everything we're going to discuss in today's show. It's pretty good. Pretty good size packet. Keep showing them who you are. During practice, I'm making sure that we're getting rotations in. Throughout the day, we have meetings, we have installs that we're going through. I'm watching film constantly. I'll go through every game of the season um, and break down that film. Everyone's just starting to get to know you. Make sure they know who you are. After it's not studying, it's more of a lifestyle. It is a 365, 24-7 cycle where you are constantly connected. The NFL is all year long. Women's voices are definitely being heard across the NFL, but there's still a lot more to be said and challenges to overcome. I still think it's a very male-dominated field. I see improvements every month, every season for sure. I'd like to get to a point where women in the sports industry feel like they earn their seat right at the table, not feel like they're just glad to be there. I'd like to see that sort of be the next wave of what gender diversity and equality is in this field. Family on three, one, two, three. Family. She made waves as the second woman in NFL history to hold a full-time coaching position. And now Katie Sowers is making strides in even further diversifying the league. When I first initially came out as LGBT, I didn't see it as even a story and then it came out I was the first openly gay coach which I had no clue since coming out with that story I had a male coach come up to me who was a former assistant coach in an uh, NFL team who actually opened up about him being gay he said seeing me coming out was was huge progress so I think you know just being visible and, and coming out as LGBT and being able to be myself uh, it, it helps the language that we use and it, it really makes us a better overall more inclusive community in five four three so what's next for these inspiring women of the nfl i would love to see myself as a head coach someday i think primetime games would be where i'd want to sit mike Tarico, when you're ready to retire a female, a male, we all bring special things to, to the table. But when you're able to contribute and help a team win and help your player become the best that they can be, that's what they care about, that's what the team cares about, and that's what the owners care about. In football, nothing is predictable. And if we've learned anything from this preseason, it's that teams like the Indianapolis Colts need to roll with the punches. Indy 
just took a major hit when franchise quarterback Andrew Luck shockingly announced his retirement from the NFL less than two weeks before kickoff. Honestly, it's the hardest decision of my life. It's definitely a low blow, but if last season taught us anything about the Colts, it's that it takes a lot for them to get knocked out. Let's go! Now it's fair to say this season the Colts' journey will be an uphill battle, but this team has never backed down from a challenge before. This team is not done climbing. In fact, we're just getting ready. So what's their secret? Get 1% better every day. It's a mentality that fits in pretty well with the Colts' current lineup. Good work in practice right now. A new coaching staff, young players, new players. It don't get no better. This team is fresh. And today, perhaps in the Colts' way. Boys, I got a need for speed. I got to warn you. We're stepping off the field and doing things just a little bit different. <laughs> and one player who understands the dance that is football all too well is former Colt safety Matthias Farley. Why are we in a ballet studio? I have a long history with ballet. My younger brother Silas, he dances for the New York City Ballet. So I've okay. obviously watched it a lot, seen him teach classes and take classes, but I've, I've never done it. And as far as the skill set that it takes to do ballet and the skill set that it takes to play in the league, is there a crossover? I think there is a crossover. I mean, a lot of things come down to your core strength, your balance. You do a lot of like isometric holds and stuff. You make that look so effortless, man. We wear tights in football, they wear tights in ballet, so. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Graceful. They crazy, huh? He want my glove like I ain't gotta go to work. And while football can sometimes seem like one long, confusing shuffle, it always requires speed and control. Something wide receivers Devin Funches, Penny Hart, and Paris Campbell all have in common. T.Y. Hilton, the ghost, right? That's his moniker, that's like his, his nickname on the field. What about you guys? Do you guys have nicknames? Funchetti, I like Funchetti. Funchetti. Penny, the dark heart. I'm, I don't know where it came from, but I like it. Man, you gotta zoom in. That's it. So oh, man, zoom right in. There, right? Sosa. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. like Sammy Sosa. Like Sammy Sosa. I touch the ball, it's a home run. Every time. <laughs> yeah. 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 New to Indy and the Colts, we're giving them a proper Hoosier welcome by feasting on their state dish. Hand-breaded pork tenderloin. So dig in. Before we burn a little rubber. This is also part of my strategy. So when we get in those go-karts outside, it's gonna slow you guys down. I don't think it's gonna work. Let's see what you're talking about. All right, let's see, let's see. Uh-oh, that's about to get real. That is a unique outfit you have on there. Uh, I'm a unique guy, so yeah, uh, it fits, absolutely. I guess, right? She's not playing. <laughs> We're gonna start with plies. Okay. First position. Tell me a little bit about the safety position. It's kind of like being the quarterback of the defense. You have to make a lot of checks. You have to see things on the fly. Plie and stretch. Do you always go this fast? <laughs> you know, you could be in man-to-man -man coverage. You could be in a zone. You could be working with a linebacker or a corner. So there's a lot of moving parts, and uh, you have to be on your toes a lot. Okay. So you know, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Loosening up the hips is what this exercise is good for. As a DB, you got to have loose hips. And why is that? You got to be able to put your foot in the ground and open up or break down or to the side and all of that comes from. From your hip? Yeah. I think this is as far as I go. But going the distance is what these guys do best. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. And although they're battling for the same spot on the field, they couldn't be any tighter off the field. Yeah, B! Funches, a five-year vet with the Carolina Panthers, has taken both rookies under his wing as they prepare for the NFL. For myself, personally, like, it's just been huge to have a vet to lean on. You know, you come in as a rookie, you, you know, have a lot of friends. You know, it's not yeah. the same. You're not at the top of the team no more. So, you know, Funch reached out to us. Um, it just kind of was a big brother vibe. And, and um, you know, to have that bond, have that chemistry, um, it's going to make you play for your brother even more. Oh, hold on, time out. <laughs> How did I come in third? <laughs> you guys are playing with some absolute legends, right? T.Y. Hill, Adam Venateri. I mean, this guy's, does he age? No, not at all. Right? I think the speed of the game picks up more because of people being so knowledgeable yeah. of knowing exactly what they have to do and paying attention to detail. So it makes everybody move that much faster and that much better. Speed. How did I get lost? Form. Six, put your heels down. Control. Ah! Balance. Woo! I might not have it, but these players sure do. 
And with all the ups and downs and ins and outs of preseason, one thing's for certain. Come kickoff, it's anybody's game. I mean, are you guys feeling the pressure? I don't feel no pressure. Um, I think, you know, pressure is eliminated when you prepare the right way. All the way, all the way! With me, I've just been trying to preach to them, do the things that you do good, but improve on them and, and be better each day. You always have something to learn, right? Especially, you know, playing at this level, you got to take it one day at a time so that you can continue to expand on the little things, like you said, that got you here to get you where you want to be, and that's winning the Super Bowl. That's a, that's a good goal. Yeah. It's a great goal to have. This football season is going to be bananas. Tune in to all the action every Sunday night right here on NBC.